when we read this words of Balaji Maharaj, then we understand that how much misunderstood these words are in the world. So let's explore. Lalaji is taking us in a very difficult territory to travel now. He is bringing in the aspects of Mantra, Yantra and Tantra. He is defining this Mantra, Yantra and Tantra, Drishtra. When we read this, words of Balaji Maharaj, then we understand that how much misunderstood these words are in the world. So let's explore. Mantra Drishta, according to Lalaji, is a seer of mantra. Mantra means mystery of nature, a remedy, a plan, or a scheme. Whoever is alert in grasping this is a Rishi. Meaning, one who can grasp the mantra, the true meaning behind it, significance behind each mantra, is a rishi. Now we go to another level of yantra drishta. The, the seer of instrument. So the earlier it was mantra, now it is the seer of instrument that runs according to certain laws. The word niyantra. In Sanskrit means one who controls time, space and matter and keeps them in order. Such a Rishi is called Aditya, which is the name of a deity that shines like the sun. The third one, Tantra Drishta, the seer of the current of the movement of nature or vitality and one who spreads this current. Such a Rishi is called Rudra. He shows the way through practical experience. So it is all about currents of energy, currents related to our attention and how we unite with these forces of nature. When we read this word Tantra, it also helps us understand what is Swatantra. Swatantra means when you, you can understand the word Swatantra when you speak this word. Swa means self and Tantra is this regulation of energy. So through this regulation of energy when you attain personal freedom. So it is all about that. Nothing to do with what generally people understand as Tantric ways of life. In addition to these, there are Vasus and Dhruvas among men, those who are conversant with the secrets of these and participate in the activities of knowledge, meditation and higher knowledge or science, Vijnana are called this is. Such men are found in every country and every race, their names and language being different, that is Abdul, Qutub. Avatar, Wali, Nabi, Sawabit, Sayyare, Sadhu, Sant, etc. These Rishis of India have given a special name to Veda by hearing, comprehending and accepting which the essence of the Veda can be easily realized. The name is Sriti. That which has been heard is being heard and will be heard is also called Suruti. Here our tradition does not claim that we have the ultimate knowledge. There is very fact that it will be heard means it can happen in the future too. There is no arrogance about the present. It is also known as Ruta, which means that which is heard. A special meaning of Suruti is divine law, divine principle and divine secret, which again is Veda itself. Nowadays it is called Suratta. The Rishis heard it before and heard it within themselves 
and we can hear the same for ourselves according to the laws laid down by the Rishis. Shruti is that which is only heard, the original, independent and unmixed sound. Smriti is a remembered law or code of conduct, Dharma Trashta, that is mixed sound. Shruti, being an independent original sound, is an authority in itself, and Smriti, being a remembered thing, depends on another authority. See, for example, <coughs> to understand how Smriti can fail, you tell something to your dear ones in your family that let's do this on this after 10 days. You give an elaborate explanation to your spouse, your children or your parents or your maids or servants in the house. Just to test it out, after two weeks, find out what you say to them. Everyone will have a different story to tell you. It only means Smriti can fail. Smriti is often tainted with personal interpretation of what you have already spoken about. A lot of things get added to it. There is a lot of reconstruction when we recall through memory. So Smriti is not a reliable aspect of our uh, scripture. Shruti while is the name of that sound which can be heard, but which is not bound by word, letter and lip pronunciation. Smriti can to a certain extent be called the imitation of that original sound which is bound by the tongue, lips, teeth and intonation, etc. Shruti is independent, Smriti is dependent. Nobody can contradict Shruti whereas Smriti can be contradicted or denied. As Shruti is authority in itself, it needs nobody's certification. Smriti is less self-authoritative and as such it needs certification of another authority. Shruti never alters, Smriti always alters. There is yet another meaning of the Shruti sound which is called Udgit. Ud meaning higher, otherworldly, original, collection of attributes or becoming. And Git meaning song. Thus the word means the song of the original and the manifestation or the song of being and becoming or the song of heaven and earth or the human voice. Om is the imitation of the Udgit and is a combination of three letters. We'll continue with this aspect of Om with here where the topic changes a bit. Thank you.